Welcome to episode number 55. I'm CJ Werleman. Thank you for joining us. In this week's episode, we expose the Indian government's plan and strategy to demolish thousands of mosques throughout the country. But first, a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you never miss a single episode. Now let's get into it. Genocide is not only underway in India, but also the effort to erase Muslims and Islam is gathering momentum and adopting new strategies. The latest move targets mosques for demolition under the bogus claim they were constructed atop of ancient Hindu temples. On Sunday, a pro-government Hindu nationalist group announced a list of 1,862 mosques to be demolished. All right, uh, more breaking news coming in. Hindu Jan Jagruti Samiti has released a list of uh, 1,862 illegal uh, mosques uh, already built. Uh, they say allegedly they have been built by demolishing temples across uh, India. You see, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his political party BJP have gained and maintained power by stoking a false sense of victimhood among the Hindu majority population. They have successfully convinced Hindus, who represent 85% of the Indian population, that they are under attack from Muslims, who represent only 14% of the total population. It's absurd. But Modi and BJP have pulled off this feat by disseminating genocidal propaganda, silencing progressive voices, manipulating a slavish media, and empowering Hindu supremacist groups. At the centre of their goal to transform India's secular democracy into a tyrannical Hindu fascist regime, is an effort to rewrite history and erase Muslims and Islam from it. It was a legendary anti-authoritarian writer, George Orwell, who said, and I quote, Every nationalist is haunted by the belief that the past can be altered. Every nationalist spends part of his time in a fantasy world in which things happen as they should, end quote. The fantasy world inhabited by Hindu nationalists is created by suppressing material facts, altering dates, manipulating quotes, forging historical documents and inventing false claims about a past that never happened. And they're doing this for a singular purpose, to falsely contend India has always been a Hindu nation and that Muslims and Islam are the product of ancient Islamic invasions and forced conversions, despite no evidence supporting these hateful claims. Their strategy is simple to follow. They claim mosques are built atop ancient Hindu temples, then petition courts to approve archaeological surveys conducted by sympathetic Hindu nationalist archaeologists, and then take the results of these bogus surveys to sympathetic higher courts, where they hope to secure a favourable verdict, one that approves the demolition of these mosques. The Indian government now has a list of hundreds of mosques and Islamic shrines that it intends to demolish, and soon, including the UNESCO-listed Taj Mahal which is one of India's greatest monuments, attracting millions of visitors from around the world. This strategy has been carried out by Hindu supremacist leaders who appear on television networks to falsely and absurdly claim that Taj Mahal was constructed atop the ruins of a demolished Hindu temple. Now watch a propagandist from RSS say exactly that on live television here last week. The national icon. Who? Is the Taj Mahal a national icon? Taj Mahal is a national icon and I, I still believe it was not built by him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you is, go. This is this is a go. Okay. This is a history. Yes, find like, find out. Please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please, <laughs> see. This is a history they want to make. Please, please, please go and visit and see the That's symbols another jumla from the West. Five seconds. Hey, wait, please, Pradeep, Pradeep, Pradeep. I I have to get to the bottom of this. The Taj Mahal was not built by Shah Jahan. It was built in Vedic times. No, it was built in about uh, 1000 AD, and it is. Well, it can be proved. It can be proved, and there are symbols of Hinduism all over the place. Go and visit and see that. On TV networks, radio stations, and online newspapers, Hindu nationalists are pushing this outrageous lie to whip up the Hindu majority population into a genocidal frenzy. Taenge ki kya Taj Mahal bhi. Bhagwan Shiv ke prachin mandir ko tod kar banaya gaya tha. Controversy around the closed rooms of the Taj Mahal. Us Taj Mahal ke piche 40 lakh lasho ka sach kya hai? To trace the roots of this mission, to demolish mosques throughout India, we must go back to 1992. The year Hindu nationalists destroyed the ancient Babri Mosque after BJP and RSS weaponized conspiracy theories alleging the 16th century mosque was constructed on the birthplace of the Hindu god king Lord Ram. As many as 15,000 people camped uh, just near the mosque and these people surged forward like a great wave. They break, broke through the police cordons 
and then started swarming all over the dome and then over the rest of it. The destruction of the mosque not only unleashed a nationwide pogrom against Muslims in the days and weeks that followed, but also catapulted BJP from political obscurity to mainstream popularity among Hindu nationalists. The demolition of the Babri Mosque washed away the stain that the Muslim rulers left on India. They were outsiders, invaders. It was the right thing to do. It's why Modi and his party pushed for the construction of a Hindu temple atop the ruins of Babri Mosque, a fight it took all the way to the Supreme Court in 2019, which shockingly stunned the world in granting the Modi regime approval to construct a Hindu temple where the ancient mosque once stood. In other words, the Supreme Court sided with the Hindu terrorists who committed this outrageous crime, which in turn has ignited nationwide calls to demolish mosques across the country by making the same bogus claim they made against Babri Mosque. In village after village, city after city, Hindu national supporters are targeting mosques with this lie, including this mosque in Gyanvapi. A Varanasi court is said to issue an order tomorrow on a fresh Mandir Masjid issue, which has now snowballed into a huge controversy. What's the Gyanvapi Masjid controversy all about? Some details. The key issue is whether land, which some say is temple land, should be handed over to the Hindu community. The Kashi Vishwanath Gyanvapi complex is home to an 18th century mosque and a 17th century, uh, an 18th century temple and a 17th century mosque. They're next to each other. The petitioners have argued that this was the site of an old Shiva temple demolished by the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb. And now we have seen the strategy play out across many Indian states, including Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, and Kerala, despite the lie being so easily disprovable. This video is being shared on social media with the claim that an old Hindu temple has been forcibly converted into a masjid by Muslims in Kerala. The claim also hits out a Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan for not speaking up on the matter. But hold on, that's not true. Comically, but tragically, this lie has gained so much traction that last week a prominent Hindu nationalist leader claimed the Grand Mosque in Mecca, Saudi Arabia was also built atop a demolished Hindu temple. But Hindu national supporters of the Modi government are not just sitting around idly waiting for Indian courts to rule in favour of their claims mosques are built atop Hindu temples, but they're also carrying out terrorist attacks against these same mosques and shrines, like they did here in Madhya Pradesh two weeks ago. His strategy and these tactics constitute the United Nations definition of genocide because they constitute an orchestrated effort to destroy Muslim culture in whole or in part, no different to the genocide being committed against Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. Needless to say, the international community has a moral responsibility to act with urgent and concrete action because words of condemnation are not nearly enough. The world cannot afford a repeat of the 1930s when Germany's Nazi party set fire to Jewish houses of worship. And with that warning in mind, we must not forget that India's ruling party and its Hindu national supporters follow an ideology that was inspired by Hitler's Nazi party. It's time for action. Write to your local representative, participate in Boycott India campaigns, be vocal on social media. Time is running out. Anyway, that's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word of your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we kindly ask you, please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed.